I'll drop you on the bed. She lets me down on the bed, notably gentle this time, and goes to sit down in the gaming chair. I hope you're comfortable. How do you like my room? It's all right. Thanks. I'm sure my choice of decoration didn't fly over your head. You should be proud. I love everything you do. It's amazing. You really are something else. Your work has helped me so much. I can't begin to describe it. How? I only draw anime girls. I was at the bottom when I discovered it. You saved me. You really did. But you must hear that a lot. And it must be so annoying. Anyone can just say that. I might sound like just another fan, but trust me, I'm not. She surely isn't just another fan. You might think I'm completely crazy. <laughs> I should keep my admiration down. I know it makes me look pathetic. How could you like someone who is this pathetic? But it's hard to control myself. I must try my best. Mm. I really relate to your characters. They're an extension of you, right? Artists always put a lot of themselves in their characters. I know that much. Only a really complicated person could fit so much personality in so many characters. At least, I think so. Or maybe it's really easy to write them. Makes fictional characters seem kind of shallow. But that's not important. You make them seem deep. And they're fragments of you, so... I am interested in you. People say you should separate the author from the work, but... How is that possible? It's all you. It says so much about you. You can't hide anything from others. And I confirmed it. I know everything you've ever posted online, and it fits. It aligns with your character's way of thinking and personality. Say what you will, they're all you. You look like you don't believe me. Tell me, don't you lose the love for media when you find out the author was an awful human being? Don't you look down on someone's art when you find out they also have a weird fetish account? Don't you think about the singer's life when they sing about their burdens? It is impossible to completely separate the work from the creator. You must accept that. By creating things, you put pieces of yourself out in the world. And I found them. The moment you made your first post, that was the moment you exposed yourself. But you know all that because you feared... But you know all that because you feared it, as you should. It's a bad idea to expose yourself to so many people, but then again, if you hadn't, we'd have never met. In the end, I'm glad things turned out the way they did. The doubts I had, they were overwhelming. We all have doubts sometimes, right? <laughs> I almost changed my mind about you. It must have been the stress. I almost... Things could have gone so wrong. Oh, do you want to know what my favorite character of yours is? It should be pretty easy to guess. I'll show you. This one. <laughs> it's obvious why, isn't it? We're identical. It's like you're my stalker or something. There's nothing that stands out from the design. When I saw that, I was shocked. Technically, you should be amazed about meeting me. It made me feel really connected to you. As if it's fate, you know? I knew I had to know more about you. I can't believe this is what got her interested in me. That's when I messaged you for the commission. 
I talked to her before? No way. You only drew her twice and never gave her a name. We'll have to change that. Since she's pretty much me, you should name her after me as well. My name's Olivia. You can address me like that if you like. I don't know what to say or think. You're very... in your head. I can imagine what you're thinking. I'm sure you're curious why you're here and what my goals are. And maybe you hate me. A lot. She stands up from the chair and sits down beside me. I look at the ground. How can she be so confident I won't attack her? She doesn't even seem to be carrying the gun she had in the forest. I guess she is relying on her strength and the knife in her pocket. Despite what you might think, I'm really not some kind of evil villain planning to kill you. If I'm being honest, I don't even have a plan. I really don't. I'm someone who follows my own instinct, what my heart tells me. This is embarrassing, but... I think you're in the right place, here, with me. Do you know what I mean with this? I... I put stupid thoughts in my head, and I was bad to you. It was a mistake. We all have those inner struggles, right? They won't win anymore. I won't let the bad thoughts take me over. No doubts. No rumination. I think when things calm down and we settle into a stable environment, you will really like me. Listen, I... I really like you. In... In a romantic way. She locks her eyes with mine and seems to eagerly await a response. I'm too speechless to say anything or think straight. I, I might be what you've been missing in your life. You're lonely, are you not? Other people, they will... Other people will disappoint you with stupidity, with being untrustworthy or abusive. I know you. I'm the only one who knows. I can provide for you. I can protect you. I can give you unconditional affection. I'll do your taxes. I'll handle your clients. I'll clean the house. I'll cook you amazing food. I'll shower you with love and also give you the space you need. I'm not lying about that. Don't you want someone to cuddle and tell you it's okay? And don't you want that someone to know you inside out? Someone smart. A person you can trust. Someone who can remove your burdens. Somebody who will make sure harm never comes your way. No other stranger can provide you with anything meaningful. This is your only chance. I admit, I didn't have much hope before, but I believe in this. Not every deep bond starts off great, but we can make it happen. I'm determined. I wanted to create a special bond don't you? Don't you? I look up at her. Yes. Ah, I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm happy we see it the same way. I was so worried you wouldn't forgive me. I appreciate you. She moves in closer and wraps her arms around me. I flinch. <laughs> it's okay. She hugs me very tightly. Let's lie down. What? She pulls me into the bed and we both lie down together. Calm down. I have to calm my breathing. She can't feel my high heart rate. It's been a while since you were in a bed. Make yourself as comfortable as you like. Hopefully my warmth helps you heat up. When was the last time you laid in bed with someone? 
I imagined it was long ago. It's been a while for me too. I wish I could stay like this forever. Not have any problems or worries. Mm. You're still cold, but I don't mind. It's still comfortable. Mm. <sighs> I miss this. It's not fair. It's not. No matter what I do, nothing works out for me. It's all for nothing. I feel like I'm going mad. It's like I'm stuck in a time loop of agony. The memories never go away. Time doesn't heal at all. I try so hard. So hard. I try more than anybody else. But it never pays off. And yet, and yet I get up every time, no matter how hard I was punched down. I give my whole life, everything, and it's never appreciated. I'm treated like trash. But that's their loss. It's on them. They never deserved my kindness. Why did I waste my time with them? It's embarrassing. But I learned. I learned so much. Things I'd have never known otherwise. So it's okay. I'm the best version of me. Thanks to my experiences. Ah, I'm being more open than I should. We're not there yet. Sorry about dumping all this on you. You barely know anything about me. Things are hard for me, so you must forgive me for not always being composed. I... <sighs> My thoughts are racing. It's like time stopped. The knife is in her abdomen. I can't tell how deep it is. I'm terrified, but I can't die here. I don't know if I hit anything vital. She is still in shock. How many seconds have passed? <sighs> she is trying to suppress a scream while trying to get a grip on the knife. I can't let that happen. I quickly slide it out of her and stab her again, this time aiming higher. It seems to slide off the ribcage and only penetrate the skin and muscles. I feel disgusted, but I can't stop. I can't hesitate. It's my life or hers. I have to kill her. <sighs> she is trying to wrestle me with all who she has and is holding onto my arm. The ribcage was a bad idea. I only know one other place that will kill her for sure. But I have to get her to loosen her grip. She's too strong to break free. Fuck. With my right thumb, I press into her left eye socket. She swiftly uses her other hand to get me off her face, which allows me to roll on top of her. This distraction isn't enough to make her let go of the knife, though. Now, she has a grip on both of my arms. There's only one thing left to try in this position. With all that I have, I throw my head against her face, going for the nose. As our bones collide, I feel a dull pain echoing through my skull. Everything is spinning and the impact is reverberating in my head and neck. Ah! I'm unsure if I managed to break anything, but I feel her grip loosen as she cries out in pain. I use this opportunity to rip my arm out of her grip. My life depends on this strike. If I mess this up, I'll die. With every ounce of strength I have, I slash it into her once again. Ugh. I feel everything. I feel the knife entering every layer, each one being more resistant. 
starting at the collarbone and burying itself deeper into the lower part of her neck. That's it. Not the part I was thinking of, but it should still work. There's no way I didn't hit anything vital. She stopped struggling. The neck is buried deep into her neck. She stares at me, lifeless, her grip being as tight as ever, but not showing any other movement. Her mouth is filling with blood as she makes attempts to breathe. Her lungs expand and contract, but to no avail. It's sad to see her body struggle like this, desperately trying to stay alive. I look down at the wound and realize how much blood is flowing out of it, despite the knife still being inside. It's all over her chest, and me. It's very warm. Should I take the knife out? Suddenly, I hear something. Shit, shit. Someone's coming up the stairs. I forgot about that person. What do I do? They're our friends, right? They might have a gun. I need to protect myself. I wonder how important she is to this person. I might be able to. Carefully, I slide out the knife, leaving a stream of blood to flow down her torso onto the bed. I pick her up and position her in front of me, her back shielding me from possible bullets. Unless they use a high caliber, but they wouldn't shoot her, right? I suppose they would if they knew she was dead. But they don't. They're standing in front of the door, probably waiting to get some kind of response from her. I lift up the knife and bring it to her neck. My hands are very bloody, so I can't get away with pretending I didn't stab her. Her chest is still moving. How long does it take for someone to die from this? Is she still alive? Is she aware of what's happening? The door slams open and a man with a gun pointed at us stands in the doorframe. His expression turns terrified the moment he sees her. What have you done? She's still alive. Put the gun down or I'll kill her. The man stands there motionless, his gun still aimed at us. He seems to be staring at her. I said put the gun down. Reluctantly, he lowers his gun and puts it on the ground. He must have seen her muscle spasms. This is good. Really good. Don't fucking touch her. Listen, she passed out from the blood loss. She's dying. If you want her to survive, you have to call the ambulance right now. He just stands there again. This is a matter of seconds. You have to get her an ambulance right now. Fuck. Finally, he pulls out his phone and starts dialing. Hello? I need an ambulance right now. My friend was stabbed. She's bleeding out. She's 4208 Diane Street. She's lying upstairs. She's dying. Listen. Yes. A girl stabbed her. She's here in the room. No, I don't know her. That doesn't matter. Just send an ambulance. No, no. He seems to hang up in the middle of the conversation and paces around the room nervously. Fucking damn it, Olivia. How could this have happened? We're already under investigation. I... Why only now? Fuck, you ruined everything. He picks up his gun. My heart starts racing. I'm leaving. You're going to wait here for the ambulance. And if she dies, I'm fucking coming for you. Remember that. Before I can respond, he storms out of the room and runs downstairs. A wave of relief washes over me. Is it over? Is it really over? Is he really gone? How am I still alive? Should I be worried about his threat? Should I try to stop her bleeding? 
That wouldn't do anything. She's already dead. The entire bed is drenched in blood and it's pooling on the floor. Maybe it will look better in the court case that's about to unfold. I'll probably be labeled a murderer. Oh well. I can't bring myself to care right now. I'm just happy to have escaped this alive. I lie here. I don't know for how long. Minutes? Hours? Who knows? Eventually, I hear faint sirens outside. That must be them. I made it. I can't believe I made it. I look up at the ceiling. There might be a corpse on top of me, but that's no concern to me. I can worry about it all later. For now, I'm safe. Exhaustion overwhelms me, and I close my eyes.